Okay, guys, we have seen the basic properties of gram positive rods and Corinibacterium diphtheri is among one of the uh, is one of the member of gram positive rods. So let me write it here. This is one of the member of gram positive rod shaped bacteria. Okay, and it is also free living one and this it is uh, sharing all this character of gram positive rods. That means usually Corinibacterium diphtheri. If I draw the structure of Corinibacterium, it will look something like this. So it's, it's it will look like this. Okay, so this kind of bacteria, it's a rod shaped and it is having all these things like that. Okay, and and, and and an important thing about Corinibacterium diphtheri because it is it is clinically significant. It is clinically very much significant because it causes diphtheria. It causes diphtheria disease. Okay, so that's why it is clinically significant. And usually this Corinibacterium diphtheri can cause different types of uh, uh, infections. The infections Corinibacterium diphtheri usually causes uh, majorly of two different types. One is the upper respiratory tract infection. And second one is the cutaneous uh, kind of infection. So let me write it here. So the infection uh, caused one is the upper upper respiratory tract. So upper respiratory tract respiratory tract infection and infection and it also causes it also causes cutaneous kind of infection cutaneous infection okay so these are the two modes of infection caused by uh, Corinibacterium diphtheri now in this upper respiratory tract infection caused by Corinibacterium diphtheri in this case it is it is strictly local kind of infection so it is a kind of local infection it is a, a localized kind of infection. Now, in this infection, uh, it, it produces a distinctive thick, grayish, and adherent kind of exudate. It is uh, it is also called a pseudo membrane uh, made up with this uh, slime uh, layer or made up with that uh, mucus layer. Okay, and that is composed of cell debris. Now, it is making that grayish. So let me write it: grayish pseudo membrane. Graced pseudo membrane like uh, something, and in this case, this this is filled with cellular debris. Cellular debris. Okay. It contains cellular debris in it. Now it coats the whole throat and may extend into the nasal passages or downward in the respiratory tract, where it exudates sometimes. Uh, obstructs the airway so it, it eventually leads to the airway construction sometimes so airway construction construction airway constriction okay actually airway constriction okay so these are the different uh, kind of uh, what you can see symptoms that we can get airway constriction as well as it it it, it influence it, it it actually swells uh, the tonsillar area and all these regions right now another important thing is that this this uh, Scordinibacterium diphtheri mostly they they are placed in a nasal cavity and also they are placed in our in, in in mouth and upper respiratory tract and nasal cavity so there is a chance of a spreading of this disease chance of spreading is via via air so via air and it resides in nasopharynx so let me let me it resides in Nosso pharynx. So this is the residual place for my Corinibacterium diphtheri, and they can uh, transfer, uh, transform the cells that, that are present there. They can kill those cells, and as a result of killing of those cells, there are cellular debris that will be stored and making this gray pseudo membrane, and it can construct, uh, it can construct airway in, in some cases. Okay. Now, as the disease progresses, the generalized symptoms start to occur. Now, in this case of generalized sim symptoms start to occur, and these symptoms start to occur due to the destruction of cell. And the destruction of cell is caused using, it is caused using or with the help of, of a toxin. It is called the exotoxin. It is a severe exotoxin produced by Corinibacterium diphtheri. It is called uh, diphtherial toxin or diphtheri toxin. It is a two component toxin made up with A and B. We'll be learning detail of this toxin uh, further, but, but uh, let me tell you this, this kind of cellular destruction, cellular destruction is caused by 
that kind of or that type of exotoxin so it is by exotoxin okay so it's a cytolytic kind of toxin this exotoxin actually blocks the protein synthesis inside the cell as a result cell can't grow right so this is the basic part and and the second part of the infection which is the cutaneous kind of infection now in this kind of infection a puncture wound or a cut in the skin can result in the introduction of this diphtheria so that's why the wound that that we can have or, or any kind of cut uh, in, in your hand or your cut in, in in membrane or in what you can say skin can lead up to the entry of this uh, cholinobacterium diphtheria into subcutaneous tissue and as it is entering into the subcutaneous tissue, it, it, it starts to damage it using exotoxin secretion. We call it cutaneous kind of infection. Now, in this kind of infection, in this kind of infection, so it is, let me write, it is via wound. And how? Because this, this kind of bacteria can be present in air. So, let me write, it can present in air. So, from air, from air, it can easily spread inside wound. Now, as it is inside wound, it will fairly can enter enter into the subcutaneous sub sorry subcutaneous layer of skin. So, as it is entered into subcutaneous layer, it will start secreting this exotoxin, and secretion of this kind of exotoxin lead to the destruction and the necrosis necrosis of tissue in this layer okay so these are the different stages of diphtherial poisoning uh, okay so these are the different stages now what are the pathogenicity that are carried out using corinobacterium diphtheria so let me talk about the pathogen diphtheria so let me talk about the pathogenicity a little extent now the pathogenicity they cause so let me write the pathogenicity is simply caused using this exotoxin so let me focus this exotoxin here this is the major culprit for this cases so exotoxin is there now this cause pathogenicity pathogenicity okay now how because the exotoxin we are talking about it's a two component toxin made up with a and b two separate units so let me draw the two di different units let's say here this is a unit and let's say this is another unit so this is unit a this is unit a and this is unit b okay so two different subunits this b unit is destined to bind with the membrane receptor present in host cell so membrane receptor so it is so let me write it receptor binding so it is it is destined for it is destined for receptor binding receptor binding and the the, the subunit a is for the active subunit okay so these are the two important parts so b is the receptor binding region a is the active subunit so a is the actual active subunit which is going to destroy the cells and doing all the jobs but b will help a to insert in, inside the host cell right so how let us look at here now let us draw the the cell membrane so let's say here it is the cell membrane of a host cell so this is the cell membrane of a host cell now uh, so let me draw it here in this case okay so this is the cell membrane of a host cell in the cell membrane there is a receptor that is present and the receptor here is so this is the receptor this receptor is the receptor to bind with this particular ab toxin of diphtheria right so now so let me write this is the host so this is the host cell okay and this is the receptor now using this receptor binding domain of this toxin it can bind with this host cell right so let me draw here so it, it will come and bind here like that and the rest of the subunit the a subunit will be attached like this okay so here it comes so the toxin will come and attach like that okay so after the attachment is established it pro provides some signals some intracellular signals inside the cell it will tell the cell to finally engulf this particular toxin now it will be engulfed inside so let, let me draw it here like this it will be 
engulfed inside. It is like that. They start to engulf this particular place because it will start making this kind of uh, cleavage and it will start engulfing it. Now, as it is engulfing it, as you can see here, here it is the receptor. Here we see our membrane receptor binding site and this is the A subunit. So everything is inside and it is engulfing it. Now after the engulfment, so this is the sequential event. So if I draw the sequentiality of the event, this is sequential event 1, this is event number 2 and we are going like this and now we will be going for a further. Now in this case what we can see that everything will be done. This is the cell surface again joined together and what we get is a vesicle inside. In the vesicle inside what we get our desired so we can get our toxin inside so here we get this is the receptor remember and here we are having the receptor binding side here we are having uh, the a part or active site of this toxin like that so this is the active side now after engulfment inside the vesicle so this is simply a vesicle now in this vesicle change in uh, pH and salt concentration finally derive uh, the release of subunit A from subunit B, right? Because subunit A is the actual uh, functional unit. So as it is uh, cleaving the subunit A out of it. So let me let me draw this part for you. So here it is the vesicle and it is clicking the subunit A out of it. So as it is clicking it out, what we can see is that again let me draw here it is the receptor. The receptor is bind, bound with this particular B segment and A segment is now free. Now as the A segment is free, it can easily readily diffuse from this to the host cell cytoplasm. So let me draw the cytoplasm of the host cell. So this is the overall host cell. Remember, this is the host cell. And now the A subunit comes out. The A subunit comes out into the cytoplasm. Now this is toxic. This is toxic. It can kill and destroy. How? In the by the means of by the means of blocking the translation or the protein synthesis. Protein synthesis. So this is the mechanism of action by this uh, diphtheria toxin active part or A part of the diphtheria toxin. So it will block the protein synthesis. How? It will block the important mediator of protein synthesis which is elongation factor. So let me write it is called elongation factor 2. So we know that elongation factor 2 or EF2 is an important component during the elongation of peptide chain during the protein synthesis. So what it will do is that it will ribosylate this EF2. It will ribosylate the EF2 as it is ribosylating the EF2. That means we are having NAD, NAD plus there. Now it will be, uh, it will take this ribosyl group from NAD plus and it will uh, attach it to the EF2 and it will produce nicotinamide only, nicotinamide only. And in this case, what it will produce, it will produce EF2. So let me write, it will produce EF2. Now attached with uh, that ribosyl group so, it will be ribosyl ribosyl group so as a result of that this ef2 ribosyl complex now is a kind of inactive so it's an inactive complex so as a result of the formation of this inactive complex uh, this no longer synthesize the protein so as a result protein synthesis is halted and the cell eventually dies Okay, so this is the mechanism of action using the toxin, right? So they use this toxin for the destruction of the cell. They use this toxin for creating the diseases and uh, degrading the cells for the upper respiratory tract infection as well as in the subcutaneous infections. In both these cases, they they uh, they usually use this toxin for their purpose, for their own purpose. Okay, use this toxin for their purpose, for their own purpose. Okay. Now let us talk about the treatment for that. So as we have seen, it is very, very dangerous to work with this uh, corinebacterium diphtheria because it can uh, cause dangerous diseases in us. But still, uh, this corinebacterium diphtheria, the treatment method of corinebacterium diphtheria can be divided into two different segments. So let me write, can be divided into two different segments. So treatment, so the treatment can be divided into two different parts because they can cause diseases in two different measures. One is the in, uh, infectivity with cell. Second thing is the killing using toxins, right? So we need to first, 
we need to first neutralize the toxin that that have entered inside our body right by coronary bacterium diphtheria so we need to reduce the toxin first so the first round of treatment that we can use the first round of treatment that we can use is neutralization neutralization of toxin this is the first important step we must do now the second important part we can follow is is uh, killing of or removal of the bacteria so these are the two different stages but we must do the neutralization of toxin first because this is the most important part and for the neutralization of the toxin we can use antitoxin of horse serum so it, we, we can use horse serum horse serum antitoxin using horse serum antitoxin will detoxify uh, the effect of any kind of corinda bacterium toxin that is present inside our body okay so this is the first kind of response that we can do and then after neutralizing all the trace of the toxin inside our body we can kill the bacteria using kind of antibiotic because this corinda bacterium diphtheria strain uh, is uh, sensitive to most of the antibiotics like erythromycin so let me write the antibiotics using antibiotics like as erythromycin like so let me change it let me change it so like erythromycin sorry erythromycin and also we can use penicillin okay so new generation penicillin okay so both this case we can kill the cell so first step is to neutralize the toxin so you have neutralized so so it, it will uh, bring this effect like that so let let me say so if this is the host cell inside the host cell what we are having we are having uh, toxins so let's say these are the toxins as well as what we are also having we are having the bacteria this is the bacteria so we need to kill both of them now if we only reduce toxin but won't kill bacteria then the bacteria can still produce toxins right so the first important step is to neutralize the toxin so what we'll do the neutralization so we will bring it neutralization means like that so we neutralize all the toxin first so this is the first kind of event after the neutralization using antibiotics we will we will kill so using antibiotics we will kill this bacterial cells so this is the second mode of response like that this is the first mode of response okay so this is the mode of response as a result of that what we can produce is a healthy healthy body okay and also our immune system is strong enough to fight against this kind of infections because our immune system designate this particular kind of toxin and diphtherial uh, materials as as foreign so all these diphtherial toxins can act as antigen it can act as antigen and our body can recognize it it will chop it out it will hold on to it and show it to the other immune cells via the mhc complexes so there are the immune response so we can have an immune response against it immune response against it so normal immune response so we can boost this immune response up you want so we can boost this up a little bit for better action right so these are the three steps so the, we can we can write this as another step so these are the third kind of steps that we can do so these are the major three steps that we can follow for the treatment of corinda bacterium diphtherial poisoning okay so that's it and i hope that's helpful thank you